Hello friends, welcome to Senior to Junior Academy. So I have got a lot of requests from the junior that to upload our videos of companies interview questions. What are the typical core questions that has been asked in the interview of mechanical or automobile companies? So I have collected a question around 50 to 60 questions from my friends with the aim that if I upload that questions with explanation, you people might get help from that. These questions are been asked uh, from last two to three years of the visiting core companies. So I guess it will help you a lot. So what uh, I will do is that I will upload a question series of question from next onwards lectures. So this will be the first lecture and in this lecture you will get one to five questions and the coming lecture you will see next five set of question. So let's see what are these questions been asked in your campus interview. So first is the question that has been asked in Fiat. Fiat is a regular visiting company and this has been asked in Fiat. So the question is why is the size of the exhaust port smaller than the size of the inlet port in case of a petrol engine. So I have put there a picture here this part is your inlet port and this is your exhaust port. So you can see that the size of the inlet port is greater than the size of the exhaust port. So basically there are two reasons for that I will explain you both the reasons. The first is that you need more air inside the cylinder as we know that more air like we breathe more air inside our stomach we get more energy. Similar happens in the case of a vehicle also that inside cylinder if more air goes you get the more torque and how can you get more air if the size of the inlet port is bigger then only you can get more air inside the cylinder and proper combustion will happen. The next is that we, you should know that the exhaust port is the hottest component in the engine. It is so hot that even it is uh, its temperature greater than the combustion temperature inside the cylinder. So what we do is that uh, why it is kept smaller because of the reason that it is the hottest component of the engine. We know that Q is equals to MCP DT. This relation we know that Q is equals to MCP DT. So if the size of this is bigger that means mass of this is bigger then we will we'll get more heat the heat generated over this part will be more and in the combustion in the spark plug that is petrol engine we know that there is a spark and we don't want any other source of heat addition apart from the spark plug heat because it will lead to knocking see like there is a spark plug it will generate a flame front across this part and what will happen this exhaust pot if it is bigger in size due to its own heat it will generate its own flame front like flame front will be like this and due to spark plug flame front will be like this so if both will collide uh, there will be a uh, knocking so in order to avoid this we keep your size of the exhaust pot smaller so i hope i have made the clear that why the inlet pot is greater in size as compared to the exhaust port. There are basically two reasons that is more we want more air and we want to avoid knocking. How can we avoid knocking? In order to, we'll reduce the size of the uh, exhaust port so that heat content will be less and no external affair of heat will go in the combustion chamber apart from the spark plug heat addition. So this was a question asked in Fiat. So we'll see next question. The next question that was asked in Tata Voltas was that what will happen to the room if the door of the refrigerator is kept open. So there is a room and you have a freeze over here and what will happen if you keep the door of the freeze open for a long time. So most of you will say that as a freeze responsibility is to cool then it will cool the room. But it is not true. The reverse is true. The temperature will go up if you keep open your refrigerator door. The reason is that uh, the reason is simple as as far as I know the reason is simple as if you open the door of the refrigerator now the refrigerator will try to cool cool the environment around it and due to that what will happen the workload on the compressor will get increase here is a compressor you know that the combination yeah, sorry the cycle of the refrigeration cycle we have the compressor throttling evaporator so what happens is that if you if the door is open the work on the compressor increases now what happens if work on the compressor increases workload increases that means it will start it will get heat up it will get heat up and it will start dissipating heat in the surrounding 
so what is happening the refrigerator is trying to cool the room and this is trying to heat up the room so net effect will be that it will try it, it will heat up because workload will get tremendous on it and it will increase the temperature of the room this is a simple explanation as far as i know there will be many more cases like thermodynamic cases to explain the answer but the simple a layman kind of answer is that as far as i have understood that if you open the door of the refrigerator in the room the workload on your compressor will increase and the dissipation will be much more than the effect of the cooling in the room so overall effect will be that it will increase the temperature of your room so this was the second question that was asked in the tata voltas and it is a important question it is been regularly asked in many of the companies also so next question is that was been asked in the tata steel the most important question which gear type does not have axial thrust so answer is your helical double helical sorry double helical or herring bone gear this is double helical or herring bone gear so in order to explain this answer you need to listen to a story the story is that you know this is a spur gear and we know that uh, spur gear has a limitation that it generates high noise when it runs at a high speed so in order to nullify this effect we have come to a helical gear this is helical gear this is helical gear but it will nullify the uh, that your speed that it will generate a we know that the spur gear generates high noise at high speed so it will nullify it but it will generate a axial thrust axial thrust it will generate the helical gear will generate your axial thrust so in order to nullify the axial thrust we have gone to a double herring bone gear why does it generate a axial thrust this helical gear because it does not have a side component of the axis of the gear so you as you can see in this design it has both the side component this axial thrust will be nullified by this side and here axial thrust will be nullified by this side so herring bone gear was the most suited gear that does not has axial thrust so this was the explanation about uh, which type of gear doesn't have the axial thrust this has been asked in tata steel and i hope i have made clear spur gear has a has a limitation of high speed generation noise this is corrected by helical gear but helical gear has a axial thrust problem and this is corrected by uh, herring bone gear so this was a third question so we'll see fourth question the fourth question is what is a specific fuel consumption and this has been asked in tata technology so what is a specific fuel consumption this is very tricky question and confusing question so let me tell you in a simple term that a specific fuel consumption or sfc is simply for developing a unit power per hour how much fuel is required that is to generate 1 kilowatt of power in 1 hour how much fuel is required simple as that if the unit is kg per kilowatt hour i got i i hope you got uh, the meaning of sfc sfc is sfc is simply but in order to generate 1 kilowatt of power in 1 hour how much fuel is required in terms of kg how much fuel is required simple as that see if more fuel is required that means your efficiency is getting low that is if if uh, sfc is decreased then efficiency will increase simple as that so this was the fourth question that has been asked in tata technology what is sfc fuel consumption so we'll see the next question Uh, the common question that third law of thermodynamics and this has been asked in many of the company like sapurji vipro accenture cognizant and many more infosys also so what is uh, here it is asking to state the third law of thermodynamics basically every student knows the zeroth law first law and second law but nobody cares about the third law so this is a common question that has been asked in this campus interview so i am here to explain the third law like third law states that the entropy of a perfect crystal at absolute zero is zero so this statement at one side you can't understand so i have to break it first you need to understand what is absolute zero absolute zero is basically the minimum temperature that can be reached the minimum possible temperature limit that can be achieved is your absolute zero so what is this like for example you have a substance a molecule like two molecule here two or three molecule here 
so what happens when you decrease the energy when you come to the minimum possible that is absolute zero temperature the molecule gets cooled and the molecule gets organized and it will come closer to each other the molecules will come closer to each other and it will attain the minimum possible energy required for the system so what happens is that in minimum possible energy it will have only one case and here you will have the entropy of the system to be zero as movement will be totally stopped by absolute zero condition so what is basically absolute zero kelvin is uh, zero kelvin is zero degree the standard is at zero degree kelvin is known as absolute zero temperature and if you convert it to the celsius it will be i guess minus 273.15 degree celsius practically see practically it is impossible to attain your um, absolute zero but in some cases you can reach near to zero degree kelvin but practically speaking it is impossible to attain zero degree kelvin zero degree absolute zero degree so uh, this was the five question i have prepared for this slide uh, the this uh, this question was very important third law of thermodynamics so in the next lecture i will upload from question number 6 to 10 again of different companies it might be repeated that some question was asked in fiat also so this was all that thank you for watching and please uh, do share this five question with your friends at it might help you and it i will appreciate if somebody uh, um, provides the uh, conditions how to improve this slide what content i have missed everybody is welcome to put their views and please comment on the video if i have missed some any important point on the questions maybe that my explanation was not up to the mark you are welcome to comment on the video so that i can improve my qualities of videos so please subscribe to my channel it is senior to junior academy Thank you for watching. All the best.